and creating a space where a lot of intensity can be held because without that softer space, intensity can only blast through. This is Abir. I'm a philosopher in California, and today I want to talk to you about humility as a superpower. The kind of philosophy that means something to me, uh, it's really focusing on things that are helpful in the here and now, not things that are theoretical or for later on. Ideas which seem really large and maybe traditional actually have uh, a sense of very practical uh, usability for you know people today. I think humility is a sense of uh, holding both the self and the other in with a sense of esteem or a sense of regard. So who you are is not really this physical body. Maybe it's not even the opinions that you currently hold. It's more the, the observer, right? The, the, the thing that's seeing what's happening is the you, right? So when you have a sense of humility, you have a sense of esteem and regard, not only for what is out here, but also what's in here. How does humility feel? I think it, there's a kind of quietness with humility. Um, it's a sense that you're kind of uh, looking uh, with a sense of interest, right? So you're kind of paying a, a, a kind of attention to uh, what you see and what's inside. And so there's a quiet kind of feeling um, that I've begun to associate with humility. It's when things get very loud and when I lose my sense of uh, moment, my sense of you know uh, being in the moment, that's when I feel like a lack of humility takes over. The reason why humility has emerged for me is because I started to run into some of the perils of not being humble. So, you know, especially as trying to be an alpha male, trying to be a dominant guy, like trying to be, you know, on top of on top of a social dynamic, um, I found traditional masculinity to be very brittle. To be a true leader in the world, right? A true, genuine world leader, uh, if that's an aspiration. Um, you cannot be so brittle, so hard, right? Because if you're really, if you're really, if you're really fixed, then the wind will snap, right? Um, either it'll snap you, it'll snap the other person. It's not very diplomatic. It's not very political. It doesn't honor the multiple values that may be in a in a particular situation. When I'm not being humble, I'm so fixated on either what someone outside me is put projecting as an authority, or I think that's more important, or I am more important. And so there's this inevitable clash that occurs. It's very destructive. Uh, it can leave a lot of uh, wounds, right? And so these are some of the perils of not being humble. And so it's through this process of again and again colliding, clashing with egos, clashing my, my ego and other people you know and the more you rise up in the world you become a high status individual or you or you become an individual who is genuinely responsible for communities or groups of people you can't afford to just be clashing with everybody all the time so humility is a sense of quiet listening uh, that creates a kind of integrative space it's a soft space where multiple values can enter. So when I'm quietly listening from a place of humility, I can allow what's important to me as well as what's important to somebody else come in and then find a genuine win-win situation, right? And we may say, oh, that's lame, win-win, like win-win-win, win-win <laughs> is for losers. Um, but I think if you're trying to build a business, if you're trying to participate in industry, you have a spiritual goal in life, if you genuinely want to be a world leader, right? And by world leader, I don't mean somebody who necessarily is the front page of a history book, but I mean somebody who is genuinely taking the human project seriously enough to try and push it forward, right? There are going to be opinions, values, beliefs that are outside of your current awareness. And without humility, you can crash and collide into these with a sense of I know it all. So I think humility really is a kind of superpower. It creates a kind of space um, for multiple values to come in, including things that are in you, which you don't believe are important. It's not about being a pushover. But it's, not, it's also not about just being this bright, shining, like I'm always the dominant guy. A leader is like an owner, right? An owner is like somebody who takes care of the community. And so humility became this 
this positive uh, asset which I could lean towards. I don't need everyone else to always exert energy to move out of my way. I'm willing to use my abundance of energy to sometimes create room for others. Humility uh, gives a chance to, I think, puncture the burden of consciousness, which the modern mind has, what they call a uh, Cartesian paradigm. Uh, what is that really about? It's this sense that the human being uh, became the center of our cosmos, right? Before, um, there was this sense that there was this thing called God, but then Nietzsche came along and said, you know, God is dead. And we had basic principles of physics, which allowed us to predict the movement of even the planets, which seemed to be this incredible thing that's far away. And we realized that humanity is um, not at the center of God's plan, right? Uh, in, in, in at least the medieval Christian sense of it, there was a new idea of what hu the human being was. And so as the human being got decentered, uh, due to the Copernican revolution, uh, due to Darwin's theory of evolution, which showed that, look, man is not uh, that special. We're just coming from a lineage of animals. And also through Freud and his uh, depth psychology uh, revolution, all of the burden of consciousness was suddenly placed on the individual, right? And so each human feels profoundly responsible for the outcome of their lives. And this creates what Alain de Botton, who is the the philosopher behind uh, School of Life, uh, he wrote a book called Status Anxiety, um, talks about how uh, in modern times, uh, there's such a burden on each individual for determining their fate. Whereas in medieval times, you could bl blame a lot of things for why your situation the way is the way it, it, it is. Um, in today's world, it seems like if, if everyone's equal, if we can achieve anything, if there's no limits to, you know, uh, enterprise, then why am I in this situation and the next person is in a better situation, right? So I think something like humility uh, helps to ease, it soothes um, some of that intense pressure um, to always be amazing, to always be correct, to always be great, to always be godlike. Um, because you are in some ways acknowledging that there is facets of yourself and the other that you don't know. It's kind of introducing a sense of mystery, I would say, back into our day-to-day -day experience. Nicholas Taleb, another philosopher, uh, very famous in financial circles and science in general, wrote a book called Anti-Fragile, which in some ways is a summary of uh, many of his previous works. Um, so in Anti-Fragile, he, he talks about um, how one of the ways of becoming anti-fragile is uh, optionality, right? And optionality means that you retain the option, you know, options traders in, in financial markets would, would describe that, okay, I'll pay $5 for a stock option. I'm not actually going to buy the stock. Um, I'm just purchasing the option to buy it if it goes beyond a certain strike price, right? So this idea of optionality is something that makes an anti-fragile system because <clears throat> then you are leaving room for things that are unforeseen, so-called black swan events. And so humility brings that into a more micro day-to-day -day approach. It creates a sense of optionality, right? There's the option, you're, you're acknowledging that there are things that you don't know about a given situation. Humility is considered by many religions one of the most important virtues to have. So the virtue of humility, um, I found this, this, uh, uh, this quote from Christianity, true humility and fear of the Lord lead to riches, honor, and long life. That's Proverbs 2.2.4. 2. Uh, when I looked at Islam, I found in Al-Araf 7, Point five five, call on your Lord with humility and in private for Allah loves not those who transgress beyond bounds. So I think this sense of humility again is like creating space, right? Without humility, and if it's only about me and what I know and what I already know and what I think is correct, there's no room for the mystery, right? And God can be a symbol, as Joseph Campbell says, uh, for all that which we don't understand, right? So. 
without humility, there's no room for any sort of blessing or some divine presence or something beyond what I conceive of to enter uh, my world. In Hinduism, humility is considered uh, within the Bhagavad Gita that the Bhagavad Gita extols humility, uh, making it the first of virtues um, mentioned by Krishna, right? So I just think it's interesting how Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, uh, all talk about humility as like the number one thing uh, there. Um, and even in Confucianism, you know, just, just bringing in uh, an additional worldview, um, humility is seen as the solid foundation of all virtues. So there you have it. You know, I think humility is something that's emerged in my own life more recently as like, uh, an antidote to what is otherwise, you know, I'm not going to say it's toxic masculinity because I'm not saying that masculinity in itself is toxic. But what I am saying is in my own life to be a very effective leader, to be a true leader um, and to be effective in accomplishing a goal that's larger than just promoting myself. Uh, I find humility is really perfect for softening uh, interactions and creating a space where a lot of intensity can be held because without that softer space intensity can only blast through right and that's great in the short term but it's uh, uh, it's it's not something that can be always all the time over the long term uh, especially if you want to win hearts and minds but there you have it the virtue of humility um, how I found it, you know, as a practical sort of meditation in my life um, that I'm, I'm, I'm working with a lot these days and just seeing how it roots deeply back into a lot of these uh, major traditions as well. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think about humility, uh, whether that's something that you have found helpful in your life or what it was that introduced you to the idea of humility. Maybe it was a very special mentor or religious path. Um, I would really love to hear more about that. And if you like what we're up to here, uh, please give us a like and a subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.